I'm Amy Harbison. Welcome to Seniors Today, a monthly program produced by the Commission on Aging devoted entirely to issues and interests of Montgomery County seniors. This month we learn about some very important ways to prevent falls and we'll discover an exciting lecture series called Arts and the Brain at Strathmore's AMP. But first, the Wheaton Library and Community Recreation Center will be opening soon, and here to tell us about this ultra-modern facility are Anita Vassallo from Montgomery County Libraries and Adrian Clutter from Montgomery County Recreation. Ladies, welcome. Thank you. This is a really thrilling and state-of-the-art facility for the county. Tell us about opening day. What's that all about, and when is that coming? So um, our ribbon cutting will be on Sunday, September 8th at 2 o'clock in the afternoon and the county executive will be there to open the facility to the public. We're really excited. Um, the facility will be open on that day from uh, 2 to 6, 4 hours on the Sunday and then for full service beginning on the Monday. Wow. Uh, so it's a very exciting uh, day for both recreation and libraries. It's the first facility of its kind in the county that combines mm. services from the two departments in one place. And also within that footprint will be uh, the Friends of the Library Montgomery County used bookstore. So there'll be a lot for people to do when they come to visit us wow. there. Wow, and it's been a number of years in the planning. It's been a number of years since we've had a regional library in Wheaton. So um, tell us a little bit about the coming together of these two different bodies. They were one side by side in Wheaton. Mm -hmm. So we have a, the rec department is physically inside with the library together. We're super excited about it because when you think about leisure, I mean, what great partnership. Uh, when you think about leisure, culture, recreation, it all ties together. And what you do in your free time, you could grab a book, you might be able to, um, you know, hit the hit the walking track or the fitness room and do a you know, just a lot of spectacular activities enjoy just hanging out in our lobby area and I think it's going to be a fantastic partnership yeah. um, this space is, uh, is is super beautiful it is there's a, a big two-story atrium so whether you come mm -hmm. in from the parking area or you walk in from Georgia Avenue there's this huge uh, soaring space to greet you with a beautiful piece of artwork a stained glass and uh, metal mobile that has been transferred from the old library that just wow. really sets the place off and uh, a great welcome desk where recreation staff will be able to help people get oriented to the building. Um, plenty of parking, there's a parking garage on the site. Um, there is an area where you can drive up to drop off your books if you're returning things and we're not open. So um, all, of the, all of the standard library services there absolutely along with the great things that recreation is going to be providing, a coffee That's shop, right. just a, a great place to be. And I understand, I know you're still staffing up for some of these things, but there will be a pottery studio in there, um, which is new to the county as far as I know. Absolutely, we'll have a state-of-the-art pottery studio. We'll have a lot of great features. We'll have a, a kitchen for cooking classes, a social hall, a dividable gym, so all those mm. pickleball fanatics, bring your paddles <laughs> and get ready. I know that they're, they can't wait for it to open. Um, your traditional uh, opportunities to do badminton. But the thing I'm most excited about is the walking track feature, which is uh, new for our recreation facilities, and it will be the first in our department. And it sounds like you listen to community needs there to have this indoor track because people really, there's so few of them that exist mm -hmm. in the county. That's really great. So bad weather, people can use it. Do you know what the mileage is for the you track? You know, I don't, I should know what the <laughs> mileage is, but I don't, I know I, I, know I need to get on it myself. Um, I know that's gonna be very popular. Um, for, you know, particularly for our seniors who want to get out and walk in the winter time yes. and then to be able to just have a great space where they could come and hang out. Um, I know so many folks are excited about being able to get their walk in and then pick up a book or That's you know sign yeah. up for a class and uh, people cannot wait for this facility to open and we are super excited about That's it. It's really thrilling and you already are you already have some classes yeah, lined we up have our, for the we fall. have a lot lined up for the fall. We've been planning um, this facility is going to give us the ability to have a large space in the social hall 
uh, larger than we have available in any of our other buildings so that some of our major programs author talks and things like that we've already booked it out those are further on into the year or into next year the other thing that I wanted to mention is there's a computer lab there with 24 all-in-one computers that mm -hmm. will be used both by libraries and rec to offer computer training for people in the community and of course you know in Montgomery County it's all about partnerships so there are a lot of other community partners or a lot of other county agencies who will be using the space for things like um, citizenship classes mm -hmm. or you know information from Montgomery College so it's going to be a really busy vibrant place and just a, a great place for people to be and there's a bus stop right in front so oh, that's perfect. public transportation uh, whether you're driving or walking or taking the bus um, I'm pretty sure they're bike racks although I haven't seen them so um, and then the park right right next door yeah, there's a park right outside there's mm -hmm. some parking park areas for yeah. having something to eat or just sitting outside and watching children play right a, a lovely little playground and when they were designing it they worked with libraries to put some book related features in there some things from uh, classic children's books oh, all wonderful. sort of ties it in and then there's a, a green space a grassy space so just um, a fun a fun destination. Yeah, we have a lot of seniors who uh, care for grandkids Very and true. like to sign their uh, youngsters up for classes and it's a great opportunity and we hope to have um, um, some combined class opportunities with the mm -hmm. libraries as well so you'll be able to come and maybe drop your grandchild off for a tiny tots class while you hit the library or hit the fitness room or walking track. We, we're encouraging their, our seniors to drop in on opening day and get their senior sneakers pass. <laughs> it's only $50, that, but it gives you access to the uh, fitness room facility at all of our community centers. Wow. But this one's going to be state of the art. That's awesome. If people want to learn more right now, I know you're still getting websites ready. Is there a, a best number to call to learn more? Oh, sure. Right now, our customer service number, which is 240-777-6840, is the best number to call. And we'll be continuing to put information up on our website as well. And if you want senior-specific information, you can go to mocorec.com backslash 55. Okay, terrific. And for us, it's best to go to our website, Montgomery County, um, Montgomery County MD.gov slash library or just search Montgomery County Libraries in Google and pick Wheaton and you'll get some pictures you can see what's going on there um, the other thing that I want to emphasize of course is we're in a combined facility but as always everything that the library offers is absolutely free uh, recreation needs to charge for some of its classes so you know people can come and do the one thing and then come over to the library and um, get themselves a card and we hope that we see a lot of seniors from the Hispanic community and the Orthodox Jewish community that surround the library and the recreation That's center great. there. So September 8th is the big day. Big Mark day. your calendars yeah. and we look forward to hearing more in the future about your collaboration together. Thank you so much for coming today. Sure. Thank you for having us. When we return, we'll talk about Falls Prevention Month. Stay tuned. Did you know there are more than 10,000 county government phone numbers? But there's only one number you need to remember for non-emergency calls, 311. MC311 is Montgomery County government's online telephone information system. Need information? Have a problem or complaint? Trying to locate a county government facility? Call 311. The call center is open Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. The website is available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. In Montgomery County, we have a goal to reduce waste and recycle 70% of all waste by 2020. By recycling and reducing waste, we save natural resources and make our community even better. So recycle at home, work, school, everywhere, and keep recycling going. For more information, call the Montgomery County, Maryland Division of Solid Waste Services at 311 or visit montgomerycountymd.gov slash recycling. Keep it going. Recycle more now. Introducing Ride on Flex, Montgomery County Department of Transportation's new on-demand transit service to help you get around and to find Rockville and Glenmont Wheaton zones. Download the Ride on Flex app to book your ride. No fixed stops or fixed schedules. The Flex comes when you book. New 11 passenger buses are wheelchair accessible and have free Wi-Fi. 
and you write for two bucks or less. Visit writeonflex.com for service areas and hours of operation. Welcome back to Seniors Today. Falls are a major threat to our health and well-being. More than a third of older adults fall each year, often leading to injuries that reduce activity and independence. But the good news is that falls can be prevented. I'm pleased to welcome speech-language pathologist Susan Rannick, who will talk about the relationship between speech therapy and falls and talk to us more broadly about falls. Thank you so much, Susan. Thank you for having me. And I know you were former president of GROWS, another important organization, so you have been at the forefront locally in, in some of these issues related to falls. Tell us, tell us why we should be so concerned about falls. Uh, uh, first of all, I'd like to mention GROWS. It's the grassroots organization for the well-being of seniors. It's one of the largest senior service providers in Montgomery County. Yes, We have you. a tremendous wealth of information available. And the reason that falls are of such concern to us is because it's a major health issue. Globally, over half a million people lose their lives all over the world because of falls, many of which can be prevented. And as you said, it can be life-changing, life-altering. It can require a change in, in living, a living situation, a, whole, a change in lifestyle. And if we can do something to prevent it, prevention is worth more than the sure. cure. Yes. What are some of the things that we can do and you talk about in your falls prevention work? Well, some falls we can prevent and some falls we can't. With aging, they're going to be natural natural challenges with cognition, with vision, and then of course we have the, the agility, the calcification, osteopenia, osteoporosis. Mm -hmm. We can't always do anything about those issues. Sometimes your foot will give out, your ankle will give out from under you. But we can work on balance, we can work on strengthening and resistance exercises, mm -hmm. and we can work on education. Education, exercise, and safety. Yeah, and the county offers a lot of services around fall prevention, also a lot of classes related to strength training and things like the bone builders and other kinds of um, activities to keep people muscles in good working order as best one can and also to make sure that they're doing the right kind of balance preparation. Exactly. Uh, September is Falls Prevention Month, by the way. Yes. And in, in light of this, GROWS has partnered with the county to provide a number of programs, drawing on the resources. The, the programs are all free and they're open to the public. And I encourage the public to get out there and find out what they can do to be safer. We talk about balance, we talk about home modifications, we talk about all kinds of things, lighting, hearing, mm -hmm. how vision has an impact on, on, on strength. So I encourage people to avail themselves of the many, many resources that Montgomery County has available. That's great. And I assume that they can find these on GROWS website, for example? GROWSMC.org and also a copy of the Beacon, a newspaper which is available free of charge at CVS and many of the communities should have a listing. It will have a listing of all the venues and the speakers and the topics to be presented. Terrific. What's the connection between speech and falls. I'm that, glad you asked that question. Thank me. you. Many people don't understand that. Thank you for that. Uh, people think that the worst thing about a fall is a break. Mm. It is not. The worst thing about a fall is your potential to hit your head, which can change your cognition. It can damage your memory. I've had people not be able to swallow because they tumble down the stairs of their home and they had to be fed by a, a peg, a, by a tube feed until we could rehabilitate them and get them back on oral feeding. The, the impact of a fall is much, much greater than people realize. People also think that, uh, that, that only adults fall. The largest demographic of people who fall is children. Yes, that makes sense. So, but we can, we can do things to strengthen and to avoid these safety issues, to, to prevent these falls. Yeah, and it seems like these issues around balance and um, the balance piece and the strength, the physical strengthening as you get older to kind of counteract what obviously you can't control, but to do your best to keep muscles going and to really do yoga and other kinds of exercises that really increase your balance is so important for 
older people. It, it is. And there are PT physical therapy screens and trainer screens where they can identify just by your inability to move or your limited range of motion where you have a higher risk for falls. Oh, interesting. And I think that's very interesting and they can structure the exercise program on the basis of that. The other issue I wanted to bring out is that a lot of people think that you fall and break and in the older population it's often the direct opposite. You turn and your body doesn't go with you, so you crack or break and you then fall. Oh. And that's what can start the downward spiral. So we try to get everybody ramped up so that they're as strong and as improve their balance as much as possible, their agility and their confidence and yes. their awareness. Yeah, and it sounds like the home, home improvements as you age are really important because so many falls really do play, take place in the home. I think there's myths that you shouldn't go out, so you're not as vulnerable, but, but in fact, you can have more falls right in your own home. Well, the biggest myth is that if you don't move, you don't go out, you don't do anything, you're not going to fall. And that's, that's the recipe for, for devastation because you'll become sed sedentary and you won't be able to move at all. And then there's the vanity. People don't want to use their canes and their walkers, but if they've been recommended, by all means, use them. Uh, referred, I have a, a, a colleague who referred to her, her walker as Buddy, and everybody thought she was bringing a man. <laughs> it, was, it was her walker. Can Buddy come too? So give us one more time the, the uh, website address that people can go to so they find out about all the wonderful activities going on in September for this very important public awareness building month. GrowsMC.org, right. the Beacon newspaper, and by all means, the libraries and all the community centers, which are partnering, they offer a number of programs on Tai Chi, on balance, on mm. yoga. Montgomery County offers a number of free programs, so I encourage the public to avail themselves of those resources. That's great. Well, we're so glad that you came today to help us build awareness about this important issue and this big month of activities related to fall prevention. Susan, thanks for coming. Thank you for having me. When we come back, we discover arts and the brain at Strathmore's Amp. Introducing Ride on Flex, Montgomery County Department of Transportation's new on-demand transit service to help you get around and to find Rockville and Glenmont Wheaton zones. Riding the Flex is easy. Download the Ride on Flex app, select your pickup and drop-off locations within the zone, and go to your pickup location, a corner near you, and you ride for two bucks or less. Visit rideonflex.com for service areas and hours of operation. Get there faster. Ride On has a new Route 129 limited stop service running along US 29 corridor. There are convenient park and ride lots along the route where parking is free. Getting cars off the road, reducing congestion, which can decrease commute time. Visit rideonbus.com to step to the minute with schedules, updates, or delays. The Route 129 limited stop service runs in both directions along US Route 29, just 15 stops from the Burtonsville Park and Ride to the Paul Sarbane Silver Spring Transit Center with our regular fare of $2. Ride On. Get there faster. Welcome back to Seniors Today. Arts and the Brain is a lecture series at Strathmore's Amp Theater that explores the ways in which creativity can alleviate suffering and strengthen vitality. My guests today are Strathmore's Director of Education, Lauren Campbell, and Betty Romero from AARP. Hi to you both, and thank you for coming. This sounds Hi. like an incredible series. Tell oh, us you. a little bit about it. Oh, sure. So um, we started Arts on the Brain in 2012, and we've had a wonderful set of speakers over the years. It's a bit of a relaunch because we're trying it at AMP, which is our fabulous uh, venue with a big LED screen and food and drink and all kinds of things. Mm. So it's a relaunch with AARP Maryland as our mm -hmm. partner. So we're really excited for this fall's events. It, you know, we hear so much, there's so much research that supports the fact that um, 
creativity and the arts do so much for our brain health, everything from allowing us to heal, allowing us to have self-expression, uh, really good for social isolation issues. So tell us a little bit about the specific topics sure. you're covering. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we have a wonderful range. The first one is art, aging, and the creative brain. So that's our keynote with Sarah Lenslock, who's the senior vice president at AARP National. Mm. She'll talk really broadly about the arts and, and how creativity really contributes to vitality. And then we have a researcher affiliated with Georgetown University who will talk about rhythm, uh, mm. in particular uh, dance movement and singing as a way of staying uh, mentally strong as well as alleviating social isolation. So those are the first two. After that, we'll have a documentary film that's called Alive Inside. It's about um, the effect of music on uh, patients experiencing memory loss mm. and how it can just really be transformative. And that's in partnership with Montgomery Hospice. Uh, the last event is, I'm really excited about this one, a uh, musician, a Strathmore artist in residence alumni, Yoko K. Sen. She is a, a composer and a digital musician who has created uh, something called the Future of Hospital Sound. So she's going to be recreating the soundscapes in hospitals and healing spaces so they're less jarring and more soothing and healing. Mm. So it's going to be a really fun Wonderful. series. And wouldn't it be great if these things are applied? Exactly, after, uh, that's the key. It's really great. So tell me about the AARP partnership with Strathmore. Well, first of all, thank you so much for inviting us to, to the show. Thank We're you for thrilled coming. to be here. We're a big part of Montgomery County and seniors not only today, but seniors tomorrow, <laughs> yeah. since everybody hopes to just uh, reach that age. Um, our partnership uh, started uh, when I uh, joined um, the team of ARP Maryland. Uh, being a neighbor of Strasmore, we, we thought about what a great way to just engage the 50 plus uh, with Absolutely. the arts. And um, ARP Maryland has over 9,000 members, mm. but if you include friends and family, it's over one million, wow. and many of them live in Montgomery County. Yes. So it makes sense for us to do something uh, regarding experiences, not only programs, services, and information, uh, but also experiences for our members to stay active, to go out, to socialize. So we um, approached them, and they were very open. We started with um, performances discounts uh, mm. and pre and post shows that we were trying to um, do some multicultural outreach. Mm -hmm. And um, then the Arts in the Brain series was mm -hmm. uh, presented to us and we jumped into it. And Sarah Log is uh, our lead expert in, in policy and brain health. Mm. And she leads the Global Council on Brain Health. She's also in charge of healthy living and uh, caregiving. And, so um, her talk is on October 2nd. I want to trumpet that so you can catch Sarah on October 2nd. That's great. Yeah. And will the format be where people listen to the lecture and then have an opportunity to ask questions? Absolutely. Or? Lots of interaction um, and chance for conversation as well. And there'll be plenty of chances to chat with the speakers afterwards too. That's great. Yeah. And how much does this event cost? So it's $25 each. Um, AARP members get 20% off, and so do Strathmore members. And so there's instructions oh. for how to get those discounts on the website. That's great. And what about AMP? Tell, for those oh. of us who haven't oh, yeah. yet been, it's what such is a that great facility place. like? Yeah, so I think many people might be familiar with our larger venue, of course, the Concert sure. Hall and the Mansion, um, which have been there for a while now. AMP is relatively new, a few years. It's right at uh, White Flint Metro, so it's still Metro accessible. Mm -hmm. And it's part of Pike and Rose, and it's just a fabulous venue with a, a restaurant as part of it. Mm -hmm. We have concerts there all the time, and food and drink. And this time we're trying a lecture with, um, we have a beautiful LED screen in the back which can show visuals. So it's gonna be kind of a neat experiment to see how it works there, but I think it'll feel a little bit like a TED Talk. Yes. Uh, I think it'll be fun, so people should come check it out. That's great. When you did this before, I know you did it mm -hmm. at the mansion, what was the feedback on this kind of a series? Because it's, oh. it's not the typical Strathmore no. fair. Right, so. it's, it's a little unusual. We, what I really wanted to do was lead with the arts and then find outstanding researchers and clinicians in uh, the field of 
of um, neuroscience or psychology or adjacent fields to come together at that intersection. Mm -hmm. And we got great feedback. I mean, we have such a fabulous, uh, intellectually curious audience in our neighborhood and as part of Strathmore. People, people really loved it. Um, and so we're excited to make it even bigger because AMP has more space. That's great. And do you see future collaborations oh, in your future? Yes, we're excited about planning um, not only uh, the series for next year, but probably we, we mm -hmm. talk, we just talk about just having uh, specific events and uh, the AMP venue, it's spectacular for, for that purpose. Well, all these things do so much for really combating what's such a national and international crisis, this idea of social isolation, Absolutely. not even exclusively with seniors, but you know, everyone is more connected to their technology mm -hmm. and less with yeah. each other. So it's so great that you're offering these opportunities for really people to really think about creativity oh, in a different way. Yeah, and one thing we prize at Strathmore is getting people in a room together to have an experience with each other and with music typically and, and other kinds of art and not be on those screens. And so um, we're really thrilled about that. I know that's a focus for AARP yeah, as well. And having the opportunity to be at AMP and you can have a drink while listening to how important brain health is, and especially as we live longer. And uh, in this yes. area, we're very blessed. We have mm -hmm. great services mm -hmm. and programs, but if people don't know about them, um, it defeats the purpose. So it's, it's good that we're doing this, uh, this series in our community. And yes. I did want to highlight the documentary, I'm not sure if I said this, um, that's about music and memory. We're doing mm -hmm. that in partnership with Montgomery Hospice, which is yes. one of the great services that we have here in our area. Mm -hmm. um, they obviously have a wonderful network of care for um, older family members and, and memory issues in particular. So that's a nice partnership That's great. Well. So what's the best way for people to learn more about the series? I know the AMP website goes into some mm -hmm. detail about each of the uh, performances or lectures, mm -hmm. so Yeah, tell us more. sure. So the best way is to go to strathmore.org slash brain, and okay. there's a page there that lists all the topics, and it'll click you over to the AMP website from there. So you don't have to worry about the AMP website. Go to strathmore.org slash brain. It's Terrific. the best way. And mm -hmm. same thing, they can find out about the specific mm -hmm. events Every, as well yep. as order tickets. Order exactly. tickets. Exactly. Mm -hmm. All the descriptions and everything they need to know. That's great. And if they want to learn more about AARP while they're there, will there be a representative uh, as well? Yes, of course. We're going to be there. Every every show is information. And we also have other collaborations with uh, Roundhouse and with many nonprofits. That's our purpose, just to empower the nonprofits. The organizations are actually doing the job uh, to do it with our support Wonderful. and our information and our top researchers Terrific. back in national. Well, it sounds like a really important series and I think people will be excited, especially if they haven't been to AMP. Yes. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much for coming in today. Thank you for having thank us. Thank you. Well, that's it for this month's Seniors Today. Don't forget that you can access this show and a great deal of information about county services for seniors by going to the Montgomery County Senior website at montgomerycountymd.gov slash seniors or call the Senior Resource Line at 240-777-3000. And as always, thank you for watching Seniors Today. There's a shelter pet who wants to meet you. Meet one today. Visit the shelterpetproject.org. Adopt. Guess what? I have some news for you. There's free food right there, junk food. You see that truck? <coughs> oh, jeez. It's a two Michelin star chef. All for free, ladies and gentlemen. All for free. Here we have a panzanella with summer vegetables and pesto. Enjoy. Okay. How we doing? So what do you got going on underneath that plate there? This food is really about to be thrown away. Yeah. Bro? Is there, is there something wrong with this food? Where did you get it from? From farmer's markets. They put aside the ugly vegetables and the ugly fruits. Carrot top, soft avocados. It was all food that was going to be discarded. Even the drink you had is made from like a little bruised peach. Did it taste a little it's like bruised? Great. It was good. The average person throws away 24 pounds of food a month. That's a lot. Isn't that a lot? Go visit savethefood.com for more information. Thank you. Junk food time!